let's keep it going. Playing Mace Fergie, also from England. All right, let's go D4. one and stop the guy from castling. Let's keep it simple. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Yeah, I don't know how computer 1600s work because I think those are like programmed to just make a mistake every, every couple of moves. Okay, now we're going to take this one. I'm tempted to go for the Greek gift, but the problem is takes takes knight g5, my bishop is pinned. So he could go queen takes g5. Because this guy is going to be... <laughs> so I'm just going to take. Uh, thanks for following, by the way. Alright. Yeah, thanks for following, Hijibu. Let's castle, let's keep it simple, or we're gonna play for the attack. No, I think we play for the attack here. <laughs> All right, now we can really think about taking this one, especially because our bishop covers uh, f8. So take, take, knight g5. King h6, we have knight takes f7. Probably King G8, okay, Queen H5 usually wins. Seems like it does there as well. Oh no, Knight takes B4. Not so easy. Take. It's probably winning. It's kind of deep. Queen G6. If the King comes out to G6, then we can play. Queen d3 check, f5. I mean, it's probably winning, but it's kind of just like not worth going for. <laughs> like at all. Um, I'm just gonna back this guy up. <laughs> We're gonna go for this guy next. Well, this one was unexpected. Bishop a3 really really want us to game. All right, no tolerance policy. We're gonna take, we're gonna take. And now we're just gonna keep it real simple. Set up the mate.
Okay, how are we meeting this guy? Maybe we'll just use the pawn? Make some weaknesses? Yeah, Seth, I, I think uh, Greek Gift is going to be one of the most uh, most common ways of winning of winning the, the game. Man, stinking. Darn, that's too bad. All right, <laughs> we gave him a chance to go out, go out in style. Uh, GG, GG. Let's go to the next one. All right, I'm gonna play D4 here. We're just gonna keep it real simple. I'm gonna play for the center, play for development, take some space, take some initiative, and. We're gonna we're gonna checkmate some folks. I don't really like playing the London. I could play it for a couple games if yeah you guys wanted. Um okay next one. Wait, did I I keep forgetting if I updated the score. Pretty sure I missed a game. Knight c6, let's go knight f3. Let me check. Alright, I think this was one. Oh yeah, I missed a couple games, I think. Should be at 12 actually. My bad, guys. My bad. Okay, E6. We're going to take this one back. Bishop b4 check, knight c3, no problem, we just block. Now our position is good, we got our pawn back, we have a nice center. Classic position, this is gonna be a very instructive game, guys. I can already feel it. Very instructive game coming. Okay, knight f6, we're gonna push, e5. When knight comes to d5 or knight e4, we'll just defend this guy, maybe queen c2. Matt, if you go to our blog, you can see some of our posts about the first season of Ultimate Sensei, and you can get more, more info about what it's like there. Okay, 97. Uh, let's see, I think... We could castle. We can also play for the attack with like H4, which I think is kind of reasonable. now that we've kind of taken this space. But I don't want to scare the guy off from castling. So this is kind of a tricky moment. We'll just play h4. Okay, he castles into it. Well, this is what we were hoping for. Um, Not gonna lie. I'm trying to play bishop takes h7 check. This is what to do. I mean, if you got the pawn on e5, your pawn's on h4, your bishop's on c1, this is the move. Even if black goes bishop e7, we can probably still take and go knight g5. Okay, f6. Maybe the one move that could prevent the sacrifice. Actually, h6 would have been good too. But here, let's see. We can take knight g5 anyway. Take. Take. King g8. Are we going to have a... Brilliancy, rook h8 takes g6. Queen h4. No, we're gonna need queen h5 check first. King moves g6. Rook f5. Check. Check. 
check. Take on g7. King e8. I really want to do it. Okay, let's just think about it. Let's just think about it for a second. There's no harm in thinking about it. Obviously, we have like other good moves too, like queen b3 and stuff, but let's just think about it. Take, take, check, take, queen h5. No, take first. J5, G6, Rook F5. Fortunately, there's no easy way to get the bishop in. We could play G6 ourselves, but Rook F5 anyway. also just start with knight g5 that's also very possible take queen h5 hmm tough one because i'm thinking if we take and go knight g5 take if we just play queen h5 king g8 hg then this doesn't always work there's rook f5 for example Check. Seven G six. Yeah, because we're we're sacking two pieces, so it's honestly not that not that simple. Yeah, I probably shouldn't shouldn't spend like forever on this decision. Um, I'm just gonna go Rook H three. <laughs> I think it, we'll, we'll analyze this one after. I, I don't think it was like that simple. It might have been working, I, I just couldn't see it. But I just want to make this move because it's a useful attacking move. And I was kind of expecting, okay, he played f6, he might want to go fe5. And now, like, now we have this one again. Although here, we have to be careful. Queen h5, there's knight f6, right? So we got to be a little bit... Accurate here. Yeah, let's put the rook on G three. And I should really calculate this on E D four. What are we doing? I feel like we could be playing this one much, much better than we are. Also, I gotta watch my time, so let's uh, let's be careful here. Let's start with knight g5. I think this is going to be the most active move. Now we're going to expect knight f6. And we have a couple ideas there. Yeah, I spent way too much time calculating there. <laughs> I don't think he should have taken this one. I think this is unnecessary.
because now we get this one, our favorite tempo in chess, the old bishop a3. Well, that's disappointing. At least go knight f6, right? Okay, this is going to be over. Let's go this way. You guys were asking for the romantic stuff, right? So here you go. <laughs> this was not a Greek gift. I never sacrificed the bishop on h7. It never happened. Well, I understand it's not my fault, but it's still not, it's still not a Greek gift sacrifice. <laughs> but he couldn't take, he couldn't take because there was a knight on g5. Okay, let's play for checkmate. Now we want this one. Hey, Neil, doing good. Yeah, because I want the games to be instructive, so I want black to play good chess. I want them to make simple, instructive mistakes. Like this one, you know, taking here instead of maybe trying one last defense. All right, gotta love that checkmate sound. Oh man, 999, oof. Hurts, it hurts. <laughs> All right, playing Queen's Gambit, let's get the knight out. Just fighting for the center once again. Nothing crazy. Oh, all of the entry levels. That makes sense. 1200, 1500, 1800. That's where people start. Okay, I think we can, whoops, grab twice here. And we're gonna do it, because we have a no tolerance policy. <laughs> we're gonna take the blunders and hopefully, hopefully these folks will learn. There's no bishop before check. We, we got it under control. Okay, knight of six. <laughs> That's funny, we can try this one. <laughs> After takes, takes, this should be four check. We'd live to regret it. So let's see, we can also trade because we're up material, but I'm feeling, I don't really want to just let black's queen out super active, kind of gambit style. So let's just pull this guy back and then we'll try to play e4 and get a big center with e5 next. That's how we do it. See, I just do the same thing every game, guys. d4, c4, knight c3, e4. Alright, bishop g b7. Let's push. Yeah, there's a famous trap. Here, if knight f6, bishop g5, knight bd7, and white takes, takes, knight takes d5, looks like we won a pawn, then black can actually just recapture, bishop takes d8, bishop b4 check, and white will have no good way of blocking the uh, the check, has to give up the queen. Okay, knight e4. So we're winning a piece here. The question is, I think we want to trade off first, just in case. Let's make this trade, and then we'll take here. No fear. Takes d6, all right, let's give a check. Depending on where black goes, either we just keep developing or maybe we play queen e2. Okay, bishop c6. Yeah, let's trade off. And let's go knight f3. Yeah, we're just piece up, so we're just gonna chill. Not do anything crazy, just get our pieces out.
four. Okay, I think black wants to go knight d5. So I'm gonna be a big meanie and I'm just gonna take that space. Maybe put my queen on d4. Is queen f3 a move after bishop d7? Wait, there is no bishop d7. Okay, Rick c8. Okay, once knight c2. Fair enough. Well, I think we just develop. Knight c2, Rook c1. Oh, to bishop c6. Oh. Hmm. Let's see. I mean, maybe we have to be careful because, like, whenever you take the rook, there's, like, some queen e7 check or something. I guess bishop e3. We can probably get away with it. Bishop c6, queen takes a7. All right, knight b4. So now we can just take and take this one. And now I'll be hanging. Yeah, in that line, bishop c6, bishop takes g2 was hanging. Yeah. L913, it's not so easy. I mean, it's not like it's not like you're a bit stuck and you just like <laughs> once you get past it, you you shoot off. You're gonna get stuck a lot. The 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 trick is to just keep keep studying. And, and not like not being in such a rush. See, I don't I don't know what you're doing, but a lot of players what they end up doing is like they play some blitz, they do some tactics, and they play some more blitz, and then they're like, oh, why why aren't I getting better? It takes time. Like you gotta play a lot of games, go over your game, solve a lot of puzzles, read a lot of books, uh, watch a lot of videos, practice, practice, practice. I mean, it's not like you know, one, two things, simple, all of a sudden you're, you're a beast, you know, it just takes like years of dedication, like years, years. It's not like a couple of days, weeks, months, hard. it's like years of just solving and grinding. We pre-move those. We pre-move those. All right, GG. All right, we got the Dutch. I like the G3 system, so I'm just gonna go with that. Drop two rooks. No one dropped two rooks, guys. <laughs> Playing HG on purpose is not the same as <laughs> dropping two rooks. Okay, looks like we got a stone wall, huh? Nice. I'm always happy to play a stone wall. Okay, let's play knight h3. I'm actually a fan of knight h3 in this position. I know I was just trashing it, but in certain positions, knight h3 does make sense when the knight has like a nice future on f4, and this is one of them. Why am I always happy to play the stonewall? Because yeah, I don't think the stonewall is a great opening. Um, yeah, here I'm just gonna play knight f4 and immediately come in and start attacking this weakness. 
Sombrero team mode, there is no best opening move. There's E4, there's D4. They're both good. I, I usually recommend for beginners to play E4. That's what I would do. If I was you. But there's no like best opening. Just not a thing. Okay, knight b6. Interesting. Defending this one, attacking this one. If we go c5 though, where's the knight going, right? If it goes back, we got knight e6. If it goes to c4, we got b3. Queen a5 check. Kind of annoying. Alright, so we'll go c5, maybe black plays knight c4, and then we'll just castle. Threatening to play b3 next move. We can also think about actually interesting knight c4, b3, queen a5 check, king f1, right? And then knight on c4 is kind of trapped. Why is e4 better for a beginner? So I think it's better for beginners because it just gives you kind of like a more direct approach to the game. And it's really important to learn how to play like open positions. Like when you play e4, you get more of an open game. When you play d4, you get more of a closed game. If you're only playing closed games, you're never gonna feel uncomfortable. You're never gonna feel comfortable in more open games and, and that's gonna be a problem. That's just gonna hold you back. So that's why I think most players should start with e4 play e4 and then if they really want to switch to d4 sometime later once they kind of understand the differences between the two moves then that's their right so g5 interesting actually pretty very very wise move because if the knight went back to d7 of course we would have knight e6 but here at least he's counterattacking. Um, so we have a couple options we can drop back ourselves and attack this pawn we can also take on b6 and then just recapture on f4. I think we want to go knight h3 here and just keep the uh, double attack. I feel like that's the most instructive move. The last game maybe wasn't so instructive, so we're just going to go back. <laughs> we're going to go back and get into instructive mode. Hey Shnamola, doing good. Okay, g4, attacking the knight again, sure, but now <laughs> I'm gonna drop back and reinstate the threat of knight e6. You know, Neil, people were asking for me to play, you know, Morphe style games and I'm just, just giving the folks what they want. So that's what happened, that's my story. I'm sticking to it and I forgot to update the scoreboard again. I think that was 14. I keep losing track. Knight c4. So yeah, I was thinking about b3 here, and then if queen a5 check, we have king f1. Knight is stuck. He might go e5. But then we're just gonna take and we're gonna gonna open the center. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Knight went back to a5. All right, but now this knight is really dim. I don't know who said it, but a knight on the rim is dim. No idea who in history said that. Or the thing about all rook end games being drawn. I don't know who said that one either. Okay, so now I really like our position because we have this knight on f4. That's really strong. And uh, that's basically 
that's it. That's all I like <laughs> about our position. But actually, apart from these weaknesses, Black's position is not not that bad. Now the question is, well, how to get this knight into the game? Because knight on c3 doesn't doesn't really do it for me. Knight d2. But then where does this knight go? Not so easy. Maybe I should bring this knight back to d3 so I can get my bishop out. Let's do it. And at some point we might play h3 and chip away black structure as well. Yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Sombrero. Thanks for following. Okay, b6, good move. Just trying to get the knight back into the game somehow. F4. So, Shnimola, this is actually a D4 speed run. So, I'm playing D4 all day, but I will be doing another speed run where. I play um, E4 in all the games, and then I'll for sure play Vienna and like Gambits and, and stuff like that. Uh, no, castling is fine. I just often like to keep the option open to play H3 and just like use my Rook. In fact, here I think I think it's a good move, uh, especially because this pawn is advanced. It really makes sense just to open up the Rook on the H file, and then it's a close position, right? So the King will actually be safe either on F1 or G1. Uh, good question, Aaron. Like, uh, the point is that knight h3, one knight can come to f4, and then the other knight can come to e5. So usually what happens is this knight on b1 goes to d2, f3, and then uses the e5 square, and then the other knight uses the f4 square, but here, okay, didn't exactly happen. Alright, knight e4, maybe threatening this guy. But I think I want to take here first and open the H file. <laughs> yeah, B Waller fan. I play the King's Indian a little bit. <laughs> no, this is uh, this is also an all King's Indian uh, speed run as well. Okay, let's take this guy. Just want to keep opening up the King side. I'm not too worried about the Queen side because one day we're just gonna. We're really just playing for this check. Now, if we want to win back this pawn, we can take and go knight c5, but I don't really know if that's necessary. I think this move is just going to be more incisive here and then just trying to get queen h5 as soon as possible. One of the big weaknesses in the opening, right, is this, this diagonal. Yeah, so I'll be playing d4. The king's in the end, and e4, e5. I have thought about changing the uh, the king's in the end. But it's just so much fun. It's hard to... Hard to give it up. But I play like Nimzo or something, you know, something solid. Okay, knight f6, he goes back. Now probably time to... Take this one, we can also consider a move like bishop e5. Just putting more pressure. Or knight e5. We can also just keep developing our pieces because ultimately who really who really needs pawns? Yeah guys, let's keep it instructive. I'm just gonna keep uh keep developing here just okay we can take this pawn it was an extra pawn we can give it back not really important in fact if black takes we go ed then i want to get my king out of the center and go rookie one okay knight b7 well let's keep improving our pieces knight f3 Yeah, black is playing really well, I think. And 
now let's bring, let's start using some of these squares. And the thing is, yeah, I just don't want to take and let his knight back in. I'm actually, we're just going to wait for him to take and then I'll take and keep his knight restricted. To me, this is kind of more important in this position. Also, maybe we'll go rook c1 at some point and, and put some pressure. Now, yeah, I don't know what to say about castling. I mean, castling is usually a good thing and for the most part, you guys should castle like every game. But if your rook is like really active on the h file and your king isn't in any real danger and can be safe, you know, you have to understand what a safe king is. Then, you know, by all means, you know, don't don't castle. Keep your rook active. You know, alpha zero it up. Then we get ideas, you know, rook h6, rook takes f6, queen takes f6, queen h5 check, king g8. You know, you just start getting ideas. Bishop h6, king g8, queen e8 check. Like, it could just be a powerful attack. Alright, cd4. I think I just want to take this one. Keep our strong center. Yeah, next move probably this, because this feels pretty unpleasant. And then maybe even bishop g5. Okay, c5. Yeah, let's just go active. This isn't really a threat to me, it's just, again, one pawn, not a big deal. Actually, I'm really happy they played c5, because it completely opened up my bishop. And now this is for sure, this is for sure a winning threat. So we have queen h5 check, king f8, bishop h6, king g8, and then bishop takes d5 at the end. Should be totally winning. Or if the king goes to d8, then we have bishop g5 pin and win. Castling, okay. How about that? Well, now we're for sure winning. <laughs> it's just a matter of what we want to sack. So yeah, I'm looking at all these ideas like takes, rook h7, queen h5. Okay, let's just keep it simple. And just go for the exchange sack. So we want to take this one with check. King will go somewhere. Then we'll play queen h5 and play for the compensation. Can castle queen side, bring the rook to h1. It should be a lot. I mean, you guys see all the arrows. Whenever you get a lot of arrows, then you know you're winning. <laughs> if you can make a lot of arrows in the board connecting your pieces to your opponent's pieces, then it's probably a good position. But the arrows have to make sense. You guys can't just, you know, draw random arrows and expect to win. The arrows have to actually lead to stuff. So 
So one point is that on queen f6, bishop takes d5, bishop e6, and this guy's hanging. Okay, cd4, I guess he got a little bit scared, but really, black had to take the rook. I mean, there's, uh, there's no excuse. Now on king g7 or king h8, we'll look for, look for the simplest way to win material. Flash win the game. <laughs> That's right, the longer the arrows, the better. Exactly. Okay, let's just keep it simple. We'll just trade off. And then let's get the queen in. Got this threat coming. Should be good. Yeah, the two classes with Kassa and Hans were really great. Hey, Journey. Um, I'm not sure, actually. Uh, I forget exactly what Elshon says. I definitely did see have seen some H4s, though he didn't call this trend of, of everyone playing Knight H3s. There have been a lot of Knight H3s so far. Queen F6. Hmm. Feels like there should be some, some tactics. Oh, right, right. Sorry. We have Bishop H6 takes Queen F7 and then Queen G. That's going to be that. Okay. GG, LO Simi. That was a good one. Okay, guys, let's get back to the educational speed run. <laughs> We're playing 10 minutes here. And all right, we got Jim Sim. Okay, we're playing D4 all day. We're playing the Kings Indian. And E4, E5. Okay, Queen's Gambit accepted. I'm just gonna play e4 here. I'm just gonna take the space. And take on c4. <laughs> the Jobaba land. I'd be embarrassed to play that <laughs> in front of the guy himself. All right, we're gonna take the pawn back. Now we, we got what we wanted. We got our nice center, just gonna develop. Knight c3, knight f3, castles. That's how you do it. Everything easy. Okay, bishop b4 check, no problem. We'll just block. A5, interesting. So queen A4 check, got knight C6. And D5, can take on C3 with check. Take back. Might be winning a piece. Let's take a look. Queen A4, knight C6, D5. If takes, takes queen e7 check or some funny business, we have knight e2. c6. Oh, c6. Good move, actually, defending the bishop. Okay, and then maybe thinking about b5, so I should be careful about this one.
Oh, he's on a different time control. What what time control is he playing? F6, good move. Opening the F file. You could try to keep the space, but I think it's going to be better just to take and leave black with a weak e pawn. That's kind of how I feel like we should play this. Otherwise, black could take on e5. Oops. Could go f5, could do a lot of stuff. Hey, Teddy Blow, thanks for subscribing with Prime. Good time to remind you guys that if you have Amazon, Amazon Prime, you get one free sub per month. Okay, let's pull this guy back. And the idea is that we also get c4 to dislodge the knight from d5. Maybe bishop d2, maybe bishop g5. And then we'll develop this guy actively somewhere. Maybe even bishop b2. Put him on the long diagonal. Interesting. Interesting pawn sacrifice. So if we take what is black wants in bishop f5? Not really sure, but opening up this diagonal really makes me want to play c4. And dislodge the knight. Yeah, let's do it. We got two bishops, we should open things up. love to take here and take here with check king goes somewhere and take on b7 because <laughs> we take the rook we get a new queen but then there's bishop e4 at the end defending and if we play d5 bishop takes d5 and we don't really get enough unfortunately so I think we're just going to have to move the queen somewhere, somewhere solid. You would play queen d2 actually and just go for the queen endgame. Queen endgame. <laughs> go for the endgame. Black kind of has to trade queens now. We take with the bishop. Knight will be hanging, has to move, and then we can even just grab this pawn on e5. Probably could have taken the pawn on the last move. Yeah, I think black is playing really well for, for this level, absolutely. Which is kind of surprising, because like you see players at like around the same level, like 950 or 1000, and one is like blundering a piece like every other move, and the other one is like playing a game where it's like actually pretty tight. <laughs> it's like not... Like based on my opponent's moves, I would estimate their rating to be much higher. Uh, than, than 950. Except for this last move, actually. This last move gives me pause because they forgot about the knight. I guess, I guess there we go. There was, the, <laughs> there's, there's the real 950 coming out. All right, we'll take this guy. And now we're just in cleanup mode. Okay, 
Okay, we can go F4. Just to get some more material on the diagonal. Hmm, no, I didn't think about a door. I did let them know. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll ask them to close the account afterwards <laughs> and give back all the points. That seems fair. Okay, now again, nothing special. We got the extra rook. This bishop is under attack after bishop g6. I'll push f5 and trap. Bishop comes this way. I might play h3. Okay, counter attack. Let's see. Can we can we do any funky stuff? Bishop f7. Rook will move. So nothing special we can really do. Well, anyway, let's let's play it. Force black to move the rook off of the active file, and we'll take here. Then we're just gonna bring in our rooks. Oh, okay. Grab that one. We'll bring the rooks in. And we want this, this, and this. Oh, king's running. No, no, <laughs> you're not getting away. One thing I haven't done at all, I think, today is promote any pawns. I haven't promoted one pawn. I've won with all of my original material, which I think is important. <laughs> all right, let's keep... Oh, we got to mate with, with the pawn. That's what we still need to do. All right, here we go. This is a good chance. This is a good chance. This one. This one would be good too, for sure. Yeah, that would be a cool odds match. Like, one player isn't allowed to promote pawns. <laughs> Or like, if you do a promote a pawn, then they can just take and... No, actually, it's not a lot to promote pawns. I think that would be fun. Okay, how are we gonna... How are we gonna mate here? Let's throw this in. Hey, Neodrez, thanks for following. See, you don't want to slow roll it too much. But we do want to mate with the pawn. Okay. And, um... <laughs> yeah, we'll call it a day for, for the first first session. Another Shagorn! Wow, we got like three Shagorns today. Alright, we'll take again. We'll take. Now, Queen takes, we go E3. Very simple. Simple and strong. Knight b4. No, I don't really believe in this. I'm just gonna go e4, I think. Oh, wait, wait, e4? No, no, hold on. Hold on, my puzzle rush instincts are firing at full cylinders. But this is not how to play the Shigorin. I don't think, I don't think my opponent was playing the Shigorin. I think they were just making some moves in the opening. But of course, it's not like this. All right, we got 1100, road to 1100 complete.